Today we have something interesting that you should know about. They are called dead zones. Dead zones are regions of vast bodies of water that are hypoxic, that is oxygen deficient, such as oceans and certain big lakes and rivers. Dead zones may be found all throughout the world. They are mainly in locations where there is a lot of agricultural and industrial activity, which dumps nutrients into the water and lowers its quality. Do you think that is a major threat to the planet? Let us know in the comments below. According to the length of the hypoxia, there are four different types of dead zones. Number one, permanent dead zone. These zones are found in deep waters with oxygen value of less than 2 milligrams per liter. Number two, temporary dead zone. The zones stay around for a few hours or days. Number three, seasonal dead zone. These zones appear every year, generally during the summer. Number four, DL cycling hypoxia. It takes place usually in warm months, but only during the night. Dead zones are quickly growing with more than 400 in existence now, compared to less than 50 in the 1960s. Fascinating, right? With that, let's show you some of these with examples. Number one, the Gulf of Mexico. The dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico is the second biggest zone of coastal hypoxia encompassing 18,005 square kilometers. That's huge. Low oxygen levels were originally noticed there in the 19th century, worsened in the 1950s when the amount of nitrate flowing from the Mississippi River increased. Number two, Baltic Sea. Did you know that over the last few years, the Baltic Sea's dead zones have grown from around 5,000 square kilometers to more than 60,000 square kilometers? That's right, phytoplankton has taken over the Baltic Sea's delicate waters, consuming most of the oxygen and smothering marine life. Number 3. Lake Erie As a student, you must have heard of this lake. But did you know it was a dead zone? Well, now you know. A dead zone in the middle section of Lake Erie was discovered in the 1950s. And Canada and United States have been working to minimize the drainage pollutants into the lake since the 1970s in an attempt to reverse the dead zone's expansion. Number 4. Chesapeake Bay The dead zone in the Chesapeake might be as large as 8 cubic kilometers. Yes, this is said by ecologists from the University of Maryland and University of Michigan. And this makes it one of the largest in the last 20 years. Urbanization and agriculture are to blame for its high nitrogen levels. Number 5. Oregon Finally, we have Oregon. The fact is that the dead zone of the coast of Oregon was initially noticed in the summer of 2002 and by 2006, it had grown to 300 square miles, that is 780 square kilometers. Why? Because only in the summer do extremely low levels of oxygen exist, making marine life hard to live. Now you know that dead zones form due to an excess load of nutrients, mainly nitrogen in the water bodies. There is concern that more oxygen-starved areas will emerge in the coastal waters of Asia, Latin America and Africa, with industrialization and more intensive agriculture increasing the discharge of nutrients. You can first share this video to make people aware of this phenomena. Planting more forests might help, as flora has high ability to soak up excess nitrogen and slow down its movement from the land to the water bodies. Let us know in the comments below what other things can be done. With that, we hope you are enlightened and work to save the planet. To know more about the world you live in and how to help, subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like this video. Thank you.